Hey everybody, it's Renee here and I am doing a process video today showing you how I'm making some coiled junk journals and uh, this is probably going to be a little bit of a long video but not hopefully too long. I am working on a fall junk journal right now and uh, I will be making a whole bunch more coming up soon. Um, some of those themes will be Christmas. Uh, the seaside, Halloween, um, kind of an art deco, not, not, well, I guess not really art deco, but like art, um, like Klimt and a whole bunch of other different artists. And also doing a circle, uh, a, sorry, a sewing journal. So you'll want to make sure you hit that subscribe so you can see some of those. Um, for now, I'll show you some of what I will be eventually putting into this journal. I have these cards, which I think are so cool, and they were part of, um, they came with Brook Bond tea, and these are older, I believe these are all from England, it looks like Heathrow House, so trees in Britain. So those will wind up going in there. I will be collaging um, this really cool napkin, there's four different sides, so I will be putting that in there. Some old dictionary, bits and pieces I had, parts of an old card. This is from a calendar and I thought this was gorgeous. So this will be going in there. Beauty is everywhere. You only have to look to see it. Uh, brass. Some scrapbook paper. There's a few of those in here. Some regular printer paper. Some washi, some acetate leaves. Some envelopes, some of these. These are all digitals I got off of Etsy. And those digital artists will all be listed down below in the description if you want to check that out. So these will be in there. A few stickers that will be in the final when we start really adding some things to it. Again, some scrap of papers, but we'll cut these out and turn them into either pockets or they will be cards for pockets. I thought this was cool, um, the scrap of paper, because we will be cutting out these and using them as pockets. The pockets will be pockets, um, but we will be using maybe one or two of those. So we will also be using, I'll show you, some ledger. I've got music sheet paper, ledger, and just some regular kind of old fashioned craft paper. We will have lots of this kind of stuff. So hopefully you check this out and you keep watching with me. So let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up some of these papers. So we already know that these are going to be note cards or cards for our pockets. Sorry if you hear things in the background because I have my window open because it's such a gorgeous day. Sometimes like you guys, I probably feel very guilty being inside when it's so nice outside. But today I am here with you making a video. I was just on a retreat last weekend with some wonderful ladies and we took this gorgeous walk. I'll throw a picture in here so you can see, but um, it was a lot of inspiration um, for me to make a nice fall journal. So that is why I'm doing the fall one right now because it's fresh in my mind. So I will probably be doing a Halloween one next, hopefully. I think this is fitting. Don't take these moments for granted, which is so true. It's so beautiful outside. We're going to have that nasty snow coming here soon, which I'm not looking forward to. I'm not a winter lover. So anyways. 
Here's some of those cards. We can also, with these, ink around the edges. You could tear them if you wanted to. Um, there's a lot of things we could do with these. Just get these done. And then I'll go on to the pockets. We'll cut out maybe a couple different sizes, some a large one and a smaller one. So we'll get these out of the way. There are so many beautiful digital kits on Etsy, and I'll list the ones I'm using. There's so many more even than the ones I'm showing. I've made some other, I think, beautiful um, journals and whatnot just recently and those will be linked to the top and the bottom for you to check out so you might want to do that okay so I think I'm going to use maybe these two. So we'll cut those out. We could also use some handmade paper we've made. Um, we'll be using a lot of different embellishments. So those will also be put into our little journal, but when we're at the decorating stage. I'm just cutting these out so they're put away. And then we'll go on to our papers. And lately I've been tearing my papers with um, a tearing ruler. You could do that, you could just fold them depending on what size you want, or even use a corner rounder. So that's also an option. In my last one I just posted, I did a little bit of both in that one. I usually like to corner around my edges just so it's easy to turn them and they don't get kind of dog-eared, I guess but it's totally up to the person making the journal what they prefer, I guess. So there's those two pockets, so we'll set those aside. So now I'm going to pull out our sheets and we have this one. This one will be cut uh, to put into kind of collagey because it's four different postcards. So I'll set that one aside. So then we'll go to look at, say, this one. And I have already, with a lot of these, I've already torn them. So now they just have to be folded. So I'm going to move these over here. And the reason I'm doing these ones first is so I know what size I need for our scrapbook papers. And you can fold these with the image on the inside or the outside. I will grab my bone folder shortly and go through those again, just to get a nice, crisp, clean fold. So this one I will fold on the opposite. And with these digital kits, you do not have to use every single sheet that was part of the kit. Pick and choose which ones you like. With these ones, I printed them on parchment and also on linen paper and some computer paper. So there's a combination of different papers that I used with this. You could use a score buddy if you wanted to fold. This one to me was just easy enough that I can just eyeball it. And then after we're done this, before we go on to our scrapbook papers, you can actually, um, if you choose to, you could measure 
the size of your paper so we know where to cut our scrapbooking paper because our scrapbooking papers are 12 by 12. So clearly they're a lot bigger than what we're using with these. So we will not need 12 by 12. This one, uh, actually all of these, we might want to go in and trim after because this was not a borderless image on some of these. So might actually go do some of that now. Just noticing that as I'm folding here. So try and line it up the best you can. It's hard when you have torn edges, but shouldn't be too hard. Just kind of eyeball it. There we go. So I will do that on the rest of them shortly. You don't need to watch that part. That would be completely and utterly boring. So there's that. And then I'll go on and I'll fold the rest and then I will show you what I do after that. So I've trimmed off the top edge and I've decided not to fold the rest of them because I'm just going to measure because we are trimming these down the middle while well, cutting them I guess right down the middle because that is where we are going to coil them so that's why I want to have a nice crisp clean image or crisp clean <laughs> fold so I can uh, trim it nicely and we have it exactly halfway in the middle so that is what I'm going to do now Perfect. And just line it up with your cutting line. Works great. All right, so I'm going to continue doing that and then I will show you the next step. So I folded and cut everything. Now I have taken my scrap of paper and I've actually lined up my page and folded it where I want it folded. And you're probably wondering why I've left extra, but I left extra on here because this, once I attach both sheets of scrapbook paper to the sheet, um, cause I'm going to put another one cause this is actually Christmas paper. I'm going to put the other paper on top of here and we're going to adhere it. Then I'm going to rip the edge and then ink it. So that is why I've left a little bit of a free edge so we have room to rip. So now I'm going to just grab my pencil and mark it accordingly and now we are going to cut it. This is Coco Vanilla paper. Coco Vanilla has such nice papers. And then we can use this for some ephemera or some pieces. And then here, we can just, same thing with our pencil, mark it, and then cut. There we go. And now we can trim it or cut it in half. And there we go. So the next sheet, I'm going to have this and then I'm going to adhere it onto this side. So it'll be this on one side and this on the other side. So I'm going to do that now and then I am going to stick it on with some glue. So I've attached the scrap of paper just with my glue and that's on both sides. So those will be in there. The next thing we're going to do is cut some of our ledger. And 
I am going to use this one that doesn't have any writing on it because I'm going to use the other ledger paper for larger ledgers. So this one, basically what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to do it sideways. So we can just trace the outline. <coughs> and then I'm going to do this up here. Okay, so now we're going to trim our ledger. I'm going to cut it in half first. That looks like it's about where I want it to be. And cut off this outside edge. And this is awesome because you can use these extra pieces for making ephemera. So that's what we'll do. So then cut that. So there we go. So this will be Get out my good white eraser and erase the line. This will be one of our ends. So it'll all look like that. And then we can add some different things to that one. Here, I'm going to cut this one off. And here, right at the edge. And same thing. You could use it on either side. So there's those. So we have that one. Next one I'm going to use is this paper. And I got this at a reuse center, which is awesome. If you have something like that in your own town, so you reduce and reuse stuff. And this actually almost looks like it might be linen and see through it and see some writing. But I'm going to trim this up and we're going to do two of this one as well. We will use this paper for our collage paper. And then here. You can hear my cat in the background. I think it's feeding time, she's hungry. So now we're going to trim that, and again we can use that for making ephemera down the road. And then right down the middle. And we will do our collage or our napkins on this paper. Okay, so our next one that we were going to maybe do is uh, music paper. So we have the music paper. And these sound like they're Irish songs, maybe. Well, this one, the other one is Spanish sounding. What do we have in the middle? Long, long ago, and I'll sing the songs of Arabi. No songs I've ever heard of. So let's trim this up and I am going to move it over so we don't have a lot of empty space and we have the title. So go like that. A lot of people measure. I'm an eyeballer so I like to just kind of wing it. Lots of papers in our little mini book, but we still need more, so let's find some more. 
So these are the papers we have so far. We are going to add some more and figure out how much room we need for in our coil. So for this book, I've decided to use this coil and I use a Zetter bind it all, but I know a lot of people also use the cinch. It's the same idea. So I'm going to be using this one. So I'm going to need some more papers, not a ton, and I also need to make our cover. So we will also be making the cover as well out of just some plain old chipboard. And I'll just be using a plain old chipboard sheet that you get with many of your packages of papers and things. So that is our next step. So I have printed off a few things. I got a few more things together to put in our little book here. And I will show you some of those things here in a second. Once we get all of this together, we will have to go through and organize it just to make sure that everything's in the order we want it to be. Oh, look at that fix person perfectly. So we got two of those. Those work great. I found some paper. It is a little bit smaller, but you could even like for color wise, attach these to either of these. You could do something like that, whatever works. But that works great too with the colors and the theme. So we'll put that in there. This is something I was gonna add. I actually made this a while back. I painted that and it's kind of fall like, winter like, whatever, but I thought we could put that in there. Some more sheets I did print, so we'll put a few more of those in there. I've got lots of embellishments and things. That can go in there. We'll trim that up a little bit. Pictures and all kinds of things that we're going to add. This I thought we could add in there too. I got this from something I bought. So we will put that in there. So same image, just blown up and shrunk. And I thought this might be kind of neat if we trim off the edge. So I'm going to, uh, I wonder how that is low as possible. So I'm going to, let's see, where are we at here? We'll go to here and here. So this is my process, <clears throat> excuse me, for making books like this. I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me. There's lots of people that have completely different other processes. I find this one works really well for me. So hopefully you guys like this process too. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's lots of fun to create like this. Uh, another thing I thought we could add, because I have lots of little bits and pieces here, is some of this fabric. So I will get out my pinking shears later and trim this up properly. But since we have some of our area here, so I will put that like so, like so. And I'm just going to kind of draw because I'm going to hand cut this. And then like I said, we'll pinking shear it up later. And this is for many of you guys who go to uh, reuse places and all those kind of places. Um, this is upholstery fabric. So it comes in one of those books. So you can pick your, your upholstery on your, on your uh, furniture. And that's all this is. I took this from that. And there we go. All right, so that will go like, that we'll trim that up a little bit better after um yeah lots of bits and pieces and doodads and things to add 
This is one of my own digitals that you can buy. Uh, these we will cut up later. These we will cut up. This is some of my hand dyed paper. So I think we're going to add that in here. I think I've got some pink and some green. And I'm just going to rip this for now. So there we go. Like I said that. These. This. I thought this was kind of neat. This is a vintage bingo card. So we can pop that in there. It has nothing to do with fall, but I thought maybe kind of neat. So our book is getting kind of big. So there's that. Then we still have to make the cover. So we have the cover and we could put some of these kind of papers on here. Um, there's so many different things we could do. So I am going to trace this for the front and back cover and plop some of this on. And we're going to do it the same way we've done the other things. So I will show you what I come up with. So now we've made our covers. We've got the front and our back covers. I'm going to go through now and I am going to corner around. There's a couple, but corner around our sheets. We will go through after and either ink, um, well we can ink a lot of these. Um, and also make sure we have enough white, which I think we do because a lot of our printed um, sheets have white space on the other side like these. So we will go in afterwards and ink and also figure out how we want these to be situated in our book. I know everybody's different. I personally find corner rounding is, I, I may have said this before, but is better for me, I think, um, because you get some dog pages and it's just easier to turn and just for the longevity of your book. But that's just my own view. So these ones, I just noticed these ones are longer already, or still, we haven't cut them down, so I'm actually going to cut these down now, and then we will corner around again on the bottoms. Just line this up with where this one is, this one isn't bad. Okay, let's get out our trimmer, I use an older trimmer, I love this style though, I have like seven or eight of them in case one of them ever gets warped because you can't buy that style anymore. Every time I see them at a garage sale or on the marketplace or whatever, I buy them. Turn this off camera. And then corner around that guy. All right. This, because of the nature of it, I'm just gonna leave it. We're going to corner around this guy. So this paper is really thick. This I'm going to leave this for now and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. But this will be a nice little element to our books. Our book and this. I might have to trim that one down, I'm not sure. Okay, so now I'm going to get my scalloped edge scissors. And these are some good quality ones. Got from the quilting store. And now we can do our edge. Line up our teeth. Doing this is very similar to doing 
edging um, of punches. So sometimes how you have to line it all up. Make sure you get the right edge. And the right groove. And there we go. So there's that one. And we will put something on the back side of that. So that will not stay like that. You could if you wanted to, but I like to cover it up a little bit. So that will eventually be covered. All right. I'm gonna speed this up because I'm sure you don't wanna see me cutting paper. Now that we finished that, the only thing I see that sticks out really is this, but that's okay. We'll figure that out after. So our next step to me is to figure out where we want all of our pages to go within our book. So this is the cover. Because there is Um, an image or images here. I'm going to have a blank page. We can have, I'll turn that that way so this lines up. We will have our lace together. Okay, we're not going to have two lace ones. You know what? I'm going to put these lace ones together, I think. Okay, those lace. We'll have that. We can move. We have to figure out what the other papers. Our bingo sheet, maybe. One of those. That. This one in. These ones I want to keep together. And you will notice I flipped through these with doing our corner rounding because these ones were the ones that had um, the torn edge. So I just left it. So I'll put those ones together because they match up. Then we'll maybe put some of these in. And some more. Uh, the similar, these are upside down. Okay, we'll go like that. Um, let me put that in. Some of that. Let me put the lace in after that. Okay, so this I think I'm going to do it like this because these kind of all match up. So I'm going to do it like that. That matches. Make sure you get that you have to really watch because there's writing on these, so you have to make sure it's the right way. So this goes with that. Put that there. Some more lace. Some images. Okay, now I'm going to try and get away from the digitals for a minute. We can put this one in. That. I'm going to use 
that one in there somewhere. That. Okay, this again is upside down. So have to make sure you get it the right way. Uh, yeah, there we go. Another one that's the same way. Uh, this one, I don't think matters which way it goes. And then our cover. So you can ink this ahead of time, or you can bind it and ink it after. Um, I will probably ink mine first, and then bind it after. I think it might be a little bit easier. So let's show you just how I'm going to ink one, and then I'm going to go on and ink it all. But I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me inking the entire thing. So we'll do that right now. So I'm using Distress Archival Ink in Ground Espresso to do my edging. I have a new pad, so I'm just going to kind of juice it up a little bit. And with this one, I'm going to do the edging just on the cover. Another thing you could do too, which I tend to do and I will show you, but I'll do it after I ink this is you can rough up your pages a little bit. Um, you can rough them up or you could rough up the cover. See, look at how that just changes the effect. It just finishes it off. I love this look, it looks so awesome. All right, so I will show you what it's like. Okay, I have had many different distressors. I've had the Heidi Swap one, which I wasn't a huge fan of, but I've got the Tim Holtz one and it works pretty good. So you just find the slot that you want to use and you can go like this and actually distress your book. And you can see like the little pieces are coming off. It's a really neat effect and it rests your edges and whatnot. So you could do something like that, which is a nice look as well. Just go over it a little bit again. So there is our cover and I will show you another page. Some people like to set theirs down and do it. I don't, I typically hold it upright and do it. So I find I can get a better grasp on it and I don't have the ink then all over my table. But everybody's different. Whatever works for you is the best way. And there we go. So that kind of looks. So I'm going to keep doing the rest of my book and then I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. So now I have finished inking all of my outside edges and now we're going to add this big buddy to the mix. So I am going to make my cuts into the edges so we can put our coil on and then we will decorate after that. So with the zutter, for those of you who haven't used one, I already know that this is coil that we need to use because it's the biggest one I have, but we need to find out how to do this, so let's see. So I've set my guide to B, which is continuous, um, I'm just wondering if it shouldn't be a D. which is inner pages. No, it should be, I think should be a B. Okay, so I'm 
We're gonna do that. That's right against the edge. And now we're gonna punch our hole. It's probably easier if I do it this way. So now I am going to pop this onto the edge. There's a little thing in the edge where you can hook it up so it goes in a continuous cut. So there we go. So that is our first page. So I'm gonna keep doing this and then I'll show you when we get to the cover, how we do the cover. So now we are doing our cover and I think I want my cover to go this way. So I'm just going to slide it in. This is on setting A or I guess you could do C. I have mine on A. Let's see what it would be like if we're on C. Yeah, no, I, I like it on this one. So we'll see how this works. And then I just line up where that hole would be normally if I wrapped around my papers. And I go again. And then you do it again. And then you flip it so you can get the area that you missed. You line it up where, wrap it. And there we go. So there is the cover. And now to coil it. So we're gonna grab our coil. And this one I always get mixed up because uh, it's backwards to the way I think. So, I always have to try and remember, do it uh, so this way. So the back cover goes, it's kind of a backwards way of thinking for me. Don't mind me, I'm kind of looking at my cheat sheet. Uh, is it this way? No. So, so we go like that, and that's how the cover goes on. And then we put our pages in here. So then we start with our front cover, because then it goes next. You want to make sure you get the holes where. Actually, you know what? I probably should have that right in there. There we go, like so. So then we're going to wrap this one in the same holes. There we go, and that just stays like that. And now we start putting our papers. So I'm going to flip it over and then we start putting our pages in. We have a lot of pages. Hopefully this all makes sense. If it doesn't, make a comment or you can always email me. I, I answer all my emails at createandplaywithrenee at gmail.com. This is pretty straightforward. You can put some of these wherever you want. If they're not the same width or length, I guess I should say, of your papers, you can put them wherever you want in your book. But most of them are, so you have to try and line them up. And this is a pretty big, and this is another thing you need to watch for too when you're doing this, is that you put your papers right way up. A lot of my papers, it doesn't matter, but oh, I saw some, they got flip-flopped. So see, this is a perfect example. They are upside down. So make sure that you get them right side up. Just do a little check through. 
I think the front ones were okay. Because that would really suck of you. Put them together and then you noticed after you coiled it and bound it and everything that your pages were not the right way. Okay, so this one, ironically enough, I think I saw the other end later on in our book, and I couldn't figure out why it was by itself. So I think that is down here, so I'm just going to have a little look here, a look-see, and see if I can find where it went to. I <sighs> hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. Sometimes you run into little quirks and problems. So you just have to slightly fix them and then away you go. Uh, maybe it's over here. Do those go together? This goes together. Uh, I don't know. It is what it is. As long as we get this right way up, we should be good. So, don't want to have your chipmunks and your pumpkins upside down. That would not be good. All right, so these ones. We'll put those in like so. I would love to hear from all of you because I'm hearing different things, whether you want to have longer videos or shorter videos. This, as you can tell, will be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, I just wanted to find out what you guys all want because my videos are for you guys. I tend to usually make shorter videos, but I am going to make some longer ones too because I had some people say that that's what they would like. So I will have some longer ones. So I hope that is okay with all of you. All right, so this one. Da, 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 da. Yep, you want it that way. And that, I think this is the one I was looking for before, but whatever, it's all good. So line them up again, make sure they're all the right way up, because that's what we need. And you'll definitely notice that whenever you have images or you have text, you have to make sure you get it the right way. Ones like this, they don't matter so much. All right. And again, for those of you that might like these digitals, the links to the digital artists will be in the description below. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like if you like my videos. And I appreciate everybody's support. You guys are awesome. This crafting world is awesome. I enjoy everybody's comments and feedback. All right. Getting there, my friends, getting there. Check this one. Yep. Almost there. Make sure I get the nuts the right way. And those ones. Okay, so there's those. Line that up. This one is a little bit different. Okay. All right, so there we go. So now we are going to set this in our zutter and I'm going to cut the coils beforehand. So that's our next step. So now I'm going to cut our coil and I will cut it probably right here and then I will wrap it after. So there we go. So now it's time to set it in our zutter. 
And I'm sure it's the same, like I mentioned before, if you have a cinch, I'm sure it's the same kind of idea. So we're going to go like that. So with this one, we do our, y, our binder diameter. And this one, I think was a one inch. I don't think it was a seven eighths. Because I don't have it in the container. I'm pretty sure it's a one inch. So if it's a one inch, it won't fit. So let's go to the one inch. That's one inch right there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this was a one inch. So you want it to fit so it fits one inch. There we go. We'll soon see if this is the one that we need. So now we're gonna go like this. Put our book down. And now we're going to, it's kind of hard, you almost need two hands. Okay, now I'm gonna move it down, see where we're going. Okay, and now I'm bringing it back here again see where our thing is. Hopefully you can see this. That one I need to do it a little bit more. There we go. So there is our book. Like so. This I'm going to just tuck. So I'll just grab my other tool these little tools actually um, my dad gave these to me many years ago so they're handy I tell you let me go wrap that into here you can even cut it shorter if you want to So there we go, there is our book. So we can flip it open, pages turn nicely, works great. Look at that, it worked really well. So this is our book. And this is going to be it for video number one, but watch in video number two when we do the decorating and the finishing of this awesome fall book. Thanks for watching everybody. Have an awesome day and we'll see you in part two. Take care.